on a 1 to 10 scale, 1 being okay and 10 being the worst, how would you characterize the current human rights situation in Azerbaijan? You know, I'm not uh, a big fan of numerical ratings because they sometimes oversimplify a very complex situation. I think the situation in, in Azerbaijan is very bad and uh, more alarmingly, it's getting worse. Uh, I think we see what potentially could be an effort to shut down all independent civil society, political opposition, and media. Uh, and if it played out that way, that would put Azerbaijan among the very worst countries in the world. Uh, I don't, not totally convinced that that's where we're heading, but I think it's a real possibility. Many observers have said that since joining Council of Europe, uh, the situation in Azerbaijan has actually significantly worsened. Why? I mean, I don't know that I would necessarily link the two. I think the situation has worsened since very shortly after the presidential election several years ago, when you first had the rewriting of the Constitution to remove term limits. Then you had uh, sort of an upsurge of repression around the European games. I think right now uh, authoritarian regimes in this part of the world are very concerned about what they saw happen in not only the Middle East but more close at home in Ukraine, even in Turkey on Taksim Square. Uh, so I think that there is uh, a great deal of insecurity uh, among these kinds of governments. They're not very legitimate. They don't have a lot of legitimate public support and therefore they see cracking down on opposition as a way of securing their positions in difficult times. For all its abuses, the Ilham Aliyev government has not faced uh, any serious sanctions from the West. Uh, in fact, Azerbaijan is getting ready to organize the uh, European Games and also a couple of years ago Azerbaijan hosted the Eurovision Song Contest. Dissidents are attributing these developments to caviar diplomacy, to the Azerbaijani government buying uh, influence in the West via lobbyists. Do you agree? I mean, I think that's certainly a part of it, but I think there's more to it than that. I mean, over the last several years, Azerbaijan has been a, an important link in the Northern Distribution Network, supplying the American and NATO troops in Central Asia. I think there was a desire on the part of Western governments not to upset that relationship. I think now, as the conflict between the, rest, the West and Russia has intensified, that there's a growing uh, desire to uh, take advantage of alternative energy supplies to Europe, which obviously I includes Azerbaijan. So I think there are a number of reasons why Western governments have tended to focus on other interests. I think it's a very short-sighted policy. I think there are a lot of historical examples that show that this kind of policy will come back uh, and hurt the West in the long run because I think the Azeri people could come to the belief that the West doesn't care how they live or how their government treats them as long as the oil keeps flowing and the supplies keep running. And I think that would be a very negative long-term consequence. Some analysts and officials here in the West have called Azerbaijan a strategic partner of the United States and also important player in Euro-Atlantic structures. Would you consider the current Azerbaijani government a friend or a partner of the West? If you read what the president's chief of staff writes, I think Azerbaijan, or at least a number of very important people in the leadership in Azerbaijan, no longer consider themselves a friend of the West. So uh, I wonder the extent to which you can continue to, to treat as a friend a country that no longer sees you as a friend. And I think that uh, it, it's very clear uh, that there is a, at least a very strong strain among the Azeri leadership that uh, believes that it can instrumentalize its, its relationship with the West, that uh, the West will sit through, sit still for whatever they do internally because the West needs them for other things and I think it's time for the West to disabuse them uh, of that. Your organization, Open, Open Society Foundation, mm -hmm. so what's the operation in there in Azerbaijan? Well, we've had a foundation, a grant-making foundation in Azerbaijan for quite some time now. But uh, last year, along with a number of other Western organizations like um, IREX and NDI, we were investigated first by uh, the tax authorities and then by the criminal authorities, and we are under uh, indictment there on some rather absurd charges. 
but uh, as a result, we are in the process of closing down our operations. How do they explain this situation, I mean, the, the authorities to, the, to your organization? I don't think they feel a need to explain to anybody right now. They just do what they want to do. Um, as I said, the charges are quite absurd, but uh, that's the case for everybody, for people being charged with treason because they're talking to Armenians or people being charged with uh, financial irregularities because they've created laws such that you can't operate without violating them. So uh, I don't think logic or reason uh, has a lot to do with it. They simply decided that they want these organizations, including ours, closed. Thank you very much. Thanks for the interview. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.